Texans beat the Titans 26 to 3. It was really worse than the score would suggest, but the second half was just a long, slow suffocation of somebody who was already dying in the Tennessee Titans. Let's watch the initial bludgeoning of the court with really That's a good comparison. Look, it doesn't look like an incredible highlight. It's the Nico Collins out route and CJ and his ability to throw with anticipation and accuracy to the sideline. You see it a bunch in this game. Nico had seven receptions for 80 yards, nothing electric, but stuff that in the future and more tightly contested games could set up some double moves and whatnot. And it was just nice to see like these outs to Nico are so money. They're like Nico pop tarts, consistent. Just... When was the last time you had a bad pop tart? You haven't, you haven't. Steelers and for Patriots. Trickery. The flip to Which, oh boy, okay, this is, look, uh, a well-designed and executed screen, which hasn't always been easy to come by in this town, but the little things like this, like Shaq Mason, watch, this isn't going to look incredible or anything, it's slowed down, he's not that slow, just catching that little edge and clearing that dude out and being in position to do it, they haven't really necessarily done that in the past, and it's gotten steadily better as the season's gone on. Uh, Des King blitzing here. He doesn't make the play, but since everybody's always complaining about Kamiko not blitzing well enough, that was a part of the successful run defense. Kurt Heinish and a bunch of other guys getting in on that play. What do we have here? Just got ourselves a beautiful Devin Singletary run where there's a certain variety of having to redirect there where it wasn't somebody penetrating deep into the backfield. He took advantage of going against the grain and the flow of the defense. And the offensive line has done, a, again, a steadily better job at those types of things. All right, I, I'm guessing, I think this is a Nico Collins out again. Just watch the, the precision timing. No big deal, right? That wasn't even the best one. But look, we're at the mercy of the NFL YouTube gods. I'm just going off of the highlights that they offered me. Brevin Jordan, here he's lined up off the ball like a tight end normally would. Up to this point in the game, he'd been used as an actual fullback a lot. Not like an H-back, but like a genuine lining up in eye formation fullback. I think he did a pretty good job of it. Does help set him up as a, a combo guy. And he might be a better blocker as a fullback than as a tight end because he doesn't have classic tight end dimensions. I know he's a muscly guy, but he's not actually that big. He does a really good job here. Watch. Okay, so right here, he's going to faint a block on the defensive end. Just kind of dip and rip, leaves him uncovered, and then stays in bounds. Sometimes he has a hard time staying in bounds. He stayed in bounds. Good job staying in bounds, Evan. This is the, the strip sack that leads to a scoop and score by Rankins going against the sixth offensive lineman who's lined up as a tight end. This is so they can, can they can use all of their offensive linemen on the very dangerous interior defensive linemen, which uh, leads me to believe ageism. Jerry Hughes, 35 years old, Houston native, the one guy who was genuinely pissed off about the Titans wearing the Love You Blue jerseys in Nashville a couple weeks ago. He still holds a lot of rage, I see here. He is playing Just today because of beautiful hands, wipes it, clears it, strip stack. Is hammered, the ball's out. Rankin's talked on the post-game show about how he came up with his celebration. Let's let's hear him deliberate. The initial reactions, I'm like, oh, throw my helmet off. Like, that's the first <laughs> thing I'm thinking. Throw my helmet off. And then, you know, it's good. You got the little devil. You got the little angel. And, you know, <laughs> the devil's like, throw the helmet off. Just throw it off. <laughs> Angel's like, wait, no, 15-yard penalty. Don't right. do that. Like, no, still a close game. All right. All right. Do my celebration, the shimmy. Like, yeah, and then, that's, and then that's when I broke that out. Another blitz here. This is why it's sometimes dangerous to bring in that extra offensive lineman because they're not that worried about that dude as a receiver. Easier to blitz. That gets everybody singled up. And Jerry Hughes, now watch watch him poke the ball out with his hand before he gets there. Doesn't land on the quarterback. Officials love that these days, I've noticed. Okay, no idea what's coming here. Oh, this! Yeah, that toe tapping. Like de with DeAndre Hopkins in the house. Oh, oh, you guys have been clamoring for Tier Tart. How's this for a motivated and angry Tier Tart? Okay, right there. See, he could have gotten caved in. This is one thing the Texans do really well. Their defensive front jets upfield, and a lot of times 
teams that do that are susceptible to traps and kickouts and everything like that. People try to attack you from the side as you're jetting upfield. The Jets, frankly, uh, get exposed that way a lot with their run defense. The Texans defensive linemen are very aware, as is Tart here. And he doesn't end up getting tackled, but he just beats the dude. Holds him up for Christian Harris to get their direct snap. This is huge. This is a great example of all of these guys, including Derek Barnett, who had one and a half sacks on the day. This is the thing I got most excited about Derek Barnett by. Direct snap to Derek Henry. We'll let this run through. It gets just completely squelched. But Derek Barnett here is going to do an awesome job coming down and blowing up the pulling guard, Skaronsky to bounce the play to the outside. And then Derek Stingley, who remember last week on the direct snap by the Browns, like tried to butt up an offensive lineman like he was going to two-gap him or something when all he's really supposed to do is turn the play back inside for all the other help that's coming. Um, so good job, A, by Derek Barnett bouncing to the outside. It's then Derek Stingley's job to bounce it back inside. But then he does even better because he takes on a tight end, much larger human than him, forces it back to the inside, and then still makes the play, too. And then everybody else is there playing their responsibilities. It's a really, really good group effort there. And then watch D'Amico. Watch D'Amico. This is your football coach. This is your football Look at him. Look at how it, damn it, let it, and look at the soft landing. Very good. Oh, okay. Will Anderson, end, end of the first half. <laughs> he does, he does yeah, something here that I, I identified this as something that he had to work on earlier in the year, which is this. Being aware of, he needed to be more aware of chip blocks and how to adjust for it. That like a chip block shouldn't stop your your pass rush dead in its tracks. And then also be more aware of when the tight ends are trying to help out at the beginning too before they go off on the route. So here's a chip block. At first I wanted to criticize the running back, but this dude actually does a pretty good job of getting right into Will Anderson's midsection. But Will makes himself skinny and then just keeps terminatoring. Terminatoring? Terminating? Not terminatoring. On his way through, very next play, I, I, thought, I thought I was seeing things because it was oh, like almost the exact same thing. This time, watch the tight end, who actually is a little bit lazy, because he just lays a lazy shoulder into Will, but Will anticipates it and ducks inside and then back around. Nice wipe of the hands there. That, that left tackle is just getting destroyed. Stroud to throw and Robert Woods, Robert, Woods. Robert Woods was going to have to be a big part of this game and he was he's a guy I remember early in the season was kind of a security blanket for CJ Stroud veteran guy knows where to be knows how to adjust the coverages and all of that and then Tank Dell emerged Nico Collins got going Robert Woods came a little bit of an afterthought like I, he's gonna have to become more of a forethought again and as he was yesterday Thanks. Time oh, okay. All right. This is great coordination and playing and understanding of responsibilities by the defensive line. First, you're going to see the defensive end jet up field, Derek Barnett. And you might be tempted to think at first, like, oh, no, look at that huge gaping hole. The defensive end got too far up field. This is what actually happened. The defensive tackles do a great job here of you got the right defensive tackle penetrating and the left defensive tackle. It's up to him on run plays to come around and replace. They do a great job here of just cleaning up and filling. I slowed that down a little bit. And there you go. That's how you limit Derrick Henry to just about nothing in two successive games over the course of three weeks. Christian Harris, broken up pass, potential pick sticks there. Man, he's just been, he's been showing up a lot more. D'Amico effect taking hold. Derek Barnett again. Derek Barnett again. Just clean hands. Back. Five sacks today, Chris Myers. Oh, I just I wanted. Oh, oh, Kurt Heinisch. That's what I wanted you to see. Kurt Heinisch in on that as well. Just bull rush, bull rush, and doesn't didn't even have to snatch or anything. Good job. And those are the highlights that the NFL gods offered us. I'll do a few more in-depth breakdowns, hopefully, in the next couple days. Really good effort by the Texans. Um, they've, they've been kind of bipolar from week to week. Good game, bad game, good game, bad game. Big, big, big game versus the Colts. You win, you're in. 
you lose, you're out. And that's pretty much it. Couldn't get any simpler than that. It's going to be on a Saturday night. Looking forward to it. I'm Seth Payne. Played 10 years in the NFL, five years for the Texans. I do sports radio in Houston and uh, also this YouTube. So if you like it, please subscribe, tell a friend. Everybody be well.